Sega Rally Championship, 1995. Sega Rally actually came out in 1994. It runs on Sega's Model 2 hardware, which was incredible for its time. It's the same system Daytona runs on, but Sega Rally's version is slightly better. The graphics chip in the Sega Model 2, which came out in 1993, wasn't even equaled by PC graphics until 1998, five years later. This is because it was based on military flight simulator hardware. It cost Sega $2 million to buy the rights to use that chip. Have a look at what console games were available at the time. These are the peak racing games, but I'm not here to give you a history lesson. I did something a bit silly, and now my force feedback doesn't work. Force Feedback is when the game puts force back into your hands. In this case, the steering wheel is supposed to self-center. When you hit a wall, it's supposed to jerk and try and jump out of your hands. You're supposed to be able to feel the rumble of the road, and mine doesn't do any of that. A few weeks ago, I was working on something else with this running in the background, and I heard it make some funny noises. Then the steering wheel went hard to the left and then went loose. It broke. And I know why. I actually got this machine for free and just spent all my life savings trying to get it to work. Free arcade games are not usually free in the long run. The monitor didn't work. Had no marquee because it's half a twin. It's not even the whole machine. This is supposed to be two machines. I've got coin slots for left and right players. There's obviously only a right player now. And it's actually the left cabinet. The force feedback didn't work when I got it. The gear shifter hardly worked. And it was full of rat's nests. So I've completely rebuilt all of the steering componentry, including what's called a particle clutch. This is what a particle clutch looks like in this application. It's got two wires coming out and it's got two sprockets for belts to go onto. The way this works is pretty fascinating. There's some plates in there. As you increase the voltage going through these wires, an electromagnet inside acts on some special magnetic dust. It makes the dust all want to stick together and to the plates, which ends up making these two pulleys stick together. Now, the silly thing that was my fault is that I didn't know what a magnetic particle clutch was. I rebuilt it and I thought, no wonder it doesn't work. It's full of dust. So I cleaned it out and put the dust in the bin. It didn't work at all after that, but because I looked up the particle clutch online and a new one was about $900, I thought I probably need to fix this. So I found the magic dust on eBay, poured some in and put it back together, and then it was stuck solid. Through lots and lots of trial and error, I managed to actually make it work again. Moving on a few years, the steering on this machine started to get super stiff. The feedback was so strong you could barely hold onto the steering wheel. My kids couldn't play the machine at all. It would just rip the steering wheel out of their hands, even on the weakest settings. I probably should have investigated it at the time, but you know, it was still working-ish, kinda, so I didn't. And I think what that's done is fried some stuff. So now it's time to pull the control panel out and see what I've caused. Here's the particle clutch. You can see the electric motor here with a belt going to the clutch and then another belt going from the middle of the clutch to the steering. So this one's connected straight to the steering. As I'm turning this, that motor is not supposed to be turning right now. It's because this clutch is stuck even though it's turned off. I'm gonna change the particle clutch because I know it needs to be done. There's still gonna be something else after that because the motor's not spinning at all. And even if the particle clutch was completely blown up, which it isn't, it's just stuck, the motor would still spin and the steering wheel just wouldn't do anything. Something in the motor circuit is bad too. What we got here? Ford LTD 1993. Something something mileage. Sitting in there now. Both nice and tight. Apparently some people don't like the way I connect wires together like this when I'm soldering. The reason I do that is because when I wrap them around, which is what I used to do, it's too common to get a little spike pointing out which can pierce the heat shrink. So I just stopped doing it that way and started doing it this way. I mean, it's still, it's still plenty strong. And if the wire's getting hot enough to melt it, I think there's other problems. Now that I've got the good clutch in there, I can turn the steering wheel and the motor doesn't turn anymore. Just doing a power cycle to see if by some miracle the steering starts working properly, but I already know that it hasn't. It would have kicked in by now. I'm just gonna follow the motor wires back. There's a little diagram on here which is handy. So I'm just gonna see if it has any voltage there when it restarts. I really hope it doesn't. I really hope this motor's okay. Mind you, if it doesn't, then that means it's the drive board down the bottom, which is also a problem. It did something, but not 100 volts. It went from 0.6 volts to 0.7 volts. Probably not enough. Down to the driver board we go. Oh, I've just tipped all my screws on the floor. This is the Sega Model 2 box. That's the game board that runs everything. The CPU and RAM and the $2 million texture chip, they're all in there. Splashing error 07. Straight away, that tells us there's an issue. This is the steering driver board. This whole thing here is just to run the force feedback. Way back in here, this orange connector here is supposed to have 100 volts connected to it. It's only got five volts. There's a fuse here. I hope that's causing the issue. I'm gonna turn the machine off before I touch it. Oh, why have they made this so hard to get at? This whole pedal assembly, look at, look at where I'm working. This pedal assembly doesn't come out, at least not easily. And the fuse I'm trying to get to is under here. The back panel doesn't come off either. Behind this connector. Oh, there we go. It doesn't look blown. 
It's fine. That's unfortunate. Oh, I do have 100 volts to the driver board. Now what? I don't know why it looked like I had no voltage there before, but I'm not happy about it. I just want to check that the motor is actually working. So I'm going to jump a power straight to the motor. Should be able to hear it. There it goes. Okay, so I've confirmed the motor works. I think I'm going to have to look up what Aero 7 is because I'm out of obvious clues. I'm going to try and bench test this as best I can. First, I'm connecting 5 volts. Hopefully, the board will come to life. There we go. Counting? Yeah. After a bunch of searching, I found that the Aero 7 just means that it couldn't calibrate the steering wheel during self-test. So that tells me that this board isn't driving the motor and not much else. At this point, all I know is that it's not a power issue and the basic brains of the thing are working. What I want to know is whether it's telling the output stage to work or not. And that capacitor is very leaky. It's sort of in the wrong area, but I need to change that. Well, that's swapped and as expected, made no difference. The only one I had was larger. Capacitors have two main values, the voltage and the capacitance. The capacitance is important you have to keep that correct the voltage is the most it can handle if you increase the voltage value it's still safe just connecting up the power a bit better so that i don't have to hold the wires the whole time turn on my power supply and it'll start counting this tool is called a logic probe on this board five volts and ground are the main two signals for the digital logic if i connect it down here somewhere that's one of the signals for the display Looking at the traces on the board, this chip is what connects everything from this side of the board to this side of the board. This side of the board is what controls the motor through these pins over here. This side of the board is what tells it to control the motor. If there's no signals going through this chip, I got problems. I'm not going to explain it, but I'm going to use this diagram to test it. I'm hoping that after a power cycle, I get a bit of life here. Oh, something's going on there. I've just been looking at the board. These things allow a low voltage interface to a high voltage interface without any chance of shorting between. So I just thought I'd make sure that I was getting the right signal at both of them. So there's a signal there to tell the motor to turn on. But if I follow it over here, it's gone. So I'm just going to bridge that and try it. Just thought I'd check the other one. I don't have continuity to either of them. Oh, that one. That one works. Well, that's not my fault. That's the humid weather where I live. I made a little blue rainbow. Should get a beep from each one now. So what caused that is called track rot. See the discoloration here, that's that's a time bomb. So even if this board works again now, pretty good chances I'll be fixing it again. Unfortunately, this is something that happens a lot with old arcade stuff. There's no real solution for it. Hopefully someone makes a reproduction driver board at some stage. The boat is running. Is it fixed? The wheel should start moving soon. Well, it's moving a tiny bit. Yeah? That's, that's working. Turn that way, back to, well, well, yep, I think that's right. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Let's try. Is it working? I think it's working. Oh, it's working. Look at this. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. It's fixed. <laughs> All right. Tiga Rally has two cars to choose from, the Toyota Celica GT4 and the Lancia Delta HF Integrale. You can choose automatic or manual. I'm going to choose manual. I'm not very good at this. I spend a lot more time fixing it than I do playing it, Three, but let's give it a shot. Two, one, Why isn't the steering feedback working? <laughs> uh, hopefully a reboot fixes it. Please move again. I mean, yeah, it's moving again. Okay, I just gave myself a heart attack for no reason. I know what happened. I took the control panel out and unplugged everything because I wanted to do some monitor adjustments before I put it back together. Something that I've been meaning to do for a while. It's a little bit brighter now. When I unplugged the control panel, I must have confused the driver board. It should be fine now. I don't even like playing manual. I know it works now. That was the main reason for choosing manual. That's better. I do want to know whether the motor is supposed to be that loud. If you know, leave me a comment. Finish! 11th. Skids. Well, I saw it. Retired. That means failed. I'm so happy this is working again. 